Hi everyone, I just wanted to say hello and give you a little tour of what I have growing here under my grow lights. Now I've started some seedlings in order to plant them out into the greenhouse under cold frames in February. And although it's the dead of winter here where I live in the Northern Hemisphere in zone 5AB, it is um, definitely the cold hardy vegetables like these, and I'll show you which they are in a second, um, these are definitely capable of growing under a cold frame in a greenhouse, even if it's freezing. The cold frame will insulate them and keep them from freezing and dying. Um, so you can definitely grow on. So had I planted these in the fall and had them under the cold frames as soon as February the 2nd past the end of the winter Persephone days, then they would start to grow again. They wouldn't have died had I had planted them in the fall. So these are getting ready to be planted in February in the cold frames, the same place they'd be growing had I planted them um, last fall. So anyways, I'll show you what's growing and uh, maybe I can inspire you to get some uh, seedlings of your own started, even just for indoor growing. So anyway, first off here in this little container, and I love growing seedlings or planting seeds in these little containers. These are made in England. I do have a link in my Amazon store if you wanna check it out. I love and I highly recommend growing in these. They're very, very tough. They don't crack, they, you can reuse them. So even though they're plastic, they're really great because you're not gonna be comp throwing these out in the garbage can. Um, they're, they cost a little bit more money than cheap plastic, but they last for years and years and are perfectly reusable and they're great for seed starting. So what I do is I multi-sow, and I do have a video of this that I'm gonna link above of showing you some pricking out that I do out of containers like this and I will definitely film another video in the future just showing how I get started and how I prick out but anyway so what you do is you multi sow in here and then after the, the seedlings develop their first true leaf so either at this point which is the cotyledon stage or when the first true leaf emerges which will be the next leaf and they haven't come up just yet then you would prick them out because the root system is really really thin and very easy uh, to get them out at that stage and they haven't interlocked with the others you can easily pot them up out of here. So you take them out gently, which I have in that video, or, and then you would put them into individual um, seed trays. Now, the reason I like to start my seedlings in something like this is because if seeds are older, especially, you don't know 100% which seeds are viable and which aren't. And if you spend time growing them in seed trays, you might get empty seed trays, which I find is a waste of time. Plus, by doing it this way, you get to harvest or use the strongest seeds that you have, the healthiest seeds, the ones that seem to have the most vigor. And I'd rather have the most vigorous seedlings growing in my um, garden or greenhouse than having ones that are weak and scraggly and maybe susceptible to diseases and pests. So this is why I prefer to multi-sow than prick out. But I'll do another video on that in future explaining more. So this is my rainbow tatsoi. So there's some purpley ones in there, as you can see right there, and there's some greeny ones. So these will be growing under a cold frame in the greenhouse. And then this is Mizuna, which is doing really well. Now it looks like there's nothing in the center, but what that is, is the seedlings are coming up and pushing the soil off of them. So these will soon be ready for transplanting out of here and into individual seed trays. And although I have a lot in here, what I'm gonna do is the ones that I harvest out of here into seed trays, those will go to the greenhouse and anything extra, which there will be, I will use for microgreens. And so microgreens can either be harvested at this stage or you can wait until there's a first true leaf that develops from here. So I still have time to decide, but once I harvest out the ones that I need for the greenhouse, then I will use the rest for microgreens. Now over here, I have some dill that I started for microgreens and unfortunately the seeds are not very good as you can see here even though I sow really really thickly when I'm sowing microgreens they did not all germinate so I am I'm gonna grow these on I'm gonna prick them out of this container probably just like a chunk at a time and I will put them into little pots or a bigger pot and grow that on in the kitchen and harvest dill in the winter time which is fantastic and the flavor is incredible right you can't even find anything like that in the store and there's nothing easier and cheaper than growing your own from seed right it's like free plants basically now this is some cilantro which I just had watered so the soil looks wet uh, but this is cilantro that I was hoping to grow for microgreens but again I think the seeds are not 100% so they did not all germinate so what I'm going to do same thing with these I'll prick them out in little clusters and plant them on into pots and grow them in the kitchen and enjoy fresh herbs in the dead of winter when everything is cold and frozen outside. Now I'm going to go over to this little dome here and this is really exciting for me. I'm very excited about these. These are all for the greenhouse. So what do I have growing under these domes? I'm going to show you. So first off I have a variety of arugula here called Venetia or Ven Venetia, Venetia. Anyway these are an arugula variety. Not really sure what this one is specifically, but apparently it's good for cold, but arugula is in general 
very cold tolerant. So anyway, I'm gonna see what it's like, but I think what these are is the leaves are bigger and wider as opposed to the thin, skinny, wild arugula style. These have like wider leaves, so there's a lot more substance to them, which would be great for eating, enjoying as a salad. So this is one variety, and I did multi-sow these in trays. So either I will grow them on as clusters, or I will separate out a little bit depending, depending on how many I get. This here is a uh, rocket, which is the traditional type of arugula you, you see. Um, rocket is a European name typically for them, but this variety they call rocket, even though it's a Canadian company that I bought the seeds from. Um, looks like the germination is pretty good and I like the little clusters, so I'll just let them grow on as these and plant them out as individual cells as they grow. Here, this is very exciting. This is rapini. <laughs> we only have one. And it's this one right here. I don't know if you could see it. Anyway, this one here is rapini. Rapini is cold hardy. So it's a type of broccoli and it's an Italian type of broccoli, but it, this variety here is very cold hardy and I'm gonna grow this on in the greenhouse under the cold frame, which will be just fine. It will not freeze under there. But with at this time of year, if you're growing, if you wanna try growing some brassicas under a cold frame that are cold hardy, you have no chance of them being attacked by cabbage white butterflies because there are none, as well as there's no flea beetles. So this is a really good time if you wanna have a chance to grow something like this that you typically have trouble with, try growing it in the very early spring or even under a cold frame in the greenhouse in the winter and you can maybe get some growth out of that. But after February 2nd passes, the end of the winter Persephone days, the days are about 10 hours long, just about, and that's the right amount of time for plants to start growing. So if I get these planted, at the um, after that date, then these will start to grow. They'll, in the meantime, they'll grow under my grow lights. They'll get large enough for me to be able to grow them, to plant them out as seedlings, um, and then they will grow from the light that they get from the from the sky. So it'll be just enough. Now down here, I was hoping you could see this here. This is very exciting. This is lettuce that I had growing in my greenhouse and I had let it go to seed intentionally because I wanted to harvest lettuce seeds from it. Now I'm not sure exactly of the variety, but it's a hardier variety. It's a little, it's one that's you can grow in the summertime. It doesn't die as quickly because the leaves are not as thin. I believe that's the variety. Maybe it's Crispino, but anyways, I'm gonna see what happens. These are all fine. They're, they did multi-sow them and the, the viability rate of my seeds are obviously really good because they're all germinating, which is great. So I'm really excited to get these planted. And then over here, I have another variety that I've grown, that another type that I've saved for my own seeds. Now these were amazing. This is red mustard. So it looks like a purpley type of leaf and really nice and spicy. And I planted these about, I think 2015 when I collected the seeds and they are still viable. So I'm super excited and the seedlings are still coming up. The seeds are still germinating. So we'll see what, how many I get by the time they grow into something. So anyways, this is it. This is what's happening. I hope that this, uh, Hope you're inspired to start some seedlings of your own. If you have grow lights, definitely do not give up. Start some greens indoors under the grow lights uh, because there's nothing tastier than eating homegrown veggies. And really seeds don't cost much. And especially if you save your own, it really doesn't cost anything, but you can use those lights to get some fresh greens. If anything, grow microgreens. And if you don't have a, green, a grow light, then you can definitely grow microgreens in the window. Consider planting some seeds in a jar for sprouts or consider planting some in a tray like this and letting them grow. Now I have a video that I'm gonna link above. Just click on that if you'd like to see how to start seeds or microgreens indoors. But I will grow, plant some more, sorry, I will film some more videos showing you exactly how to do it and things like this because it doesn't have to be complicated but you definitely should definitely try growing some greens inside even in the winter because there's nothing tastier than homegrown and there's nothing more self-sufficient than planting your own in your own house harvesting from your own house i think is great and the flavor is amazing and it's just such a sustainable way of growing vegetables and it's really freeing so anyway this is what's happening wanted to share it all with you hope you're all having a super day happy new year to everyone i'm really excited for 2020 and all the, the fun it'll bring in the garden and i uh, hope you all have a great uh hope you all have a great day some uh look forward to some uh great gardening as well anyway that's it for today if you like this video please give me a like as well please click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to be notified of any upcoming videos and i'll definitely be filming a lot more coming up this year and i look forward to talking to you all again really soon that's it for me today bye for now and happy gardening